Welcome to the Cisco Prime Infrastructure 3.0 product training series. This is the Monitoring Features Overview video. Network monitoring tasks comprise a broad range of activities. Monitoring the network infrastructure. Are devices and their components running as expected? Monitoring network performance. Is network traffic routing for optimal use of resources? Meeting quality of service agreements? Monitoring applications. What applications are running on the network? How are they behaving? Monitoring clients and access. Are users able to connect to the network? Access the applications that they want? Have the experience that they expect? Monitoring the platform. Is the prime infrastructure server in good health? Running optimally? In fact, monitoring the network involves every aspect of ensuring that the network infrastructure is operating efficiently and is expected. The network can meet user requests and respond to varying demands, and the network meets operational and business requirements. Recognizing the range of Cisco Prime Infrastructure monitoring capabilities, key data analysis tools, and the underlying system processes that collect network data will help you manage your monitoring tasks more efficiently and effectively. Training Objectives After you complete this training, you will be able to recognize the key performance and fault monitoring capabilities and monitoring tools available in Prime Infrastructure the processes that Prime Infrastructure uses to collect and report network and application metrics, and the key tools that you can use to analyze network data. Whether you're monitoring the network infrastructure and its usage, client and end-user support, or the Prime Infrastructure system itself, your goal is continuous awareness of how the network is performing and whether there are network conditions that need attention. Prime Infrastructure provides the features that you need to meet these goals. Let's start with the network infrastructure. From wired and wireless devices on the network to compute devices in the data center, you can monitor at as high or granular a level as you need. Summary views and aggregate data let you see devices in a broader context. Or, you can access highly detailed device and performance information about network and compute devices down to the component levels, such as wired device details, including modules, ports, and interfaces. Wireless device details, including interfaces, clients, mesh, and security. And compute device details, including the schematic, cluster, server, and module information. With application visibility and control functionality, you have insight into network user activity and the applications that they're running. And you can track the end user experience from a summary performance level down to the detailed client and user level, including session details and history, application usage, and user identification. When monitoring wireless aspects of network operations, you can evaluate such factors as radio frequency or RF interferers and signal coverage problems reported by Radio Resource Management or RRM. Context-aware data, which reports the location information of mobility assets, including rogue devices, clients, and tagged assets and security factors such as top issues, rogue activity, and potential attacks. For all of the performance monitoring aspects of the system, from the infrastructure to applications to clients and users, Prime Infrastructure reports faults that might be causing network impacts. Fault monitoring includes collecting all of the syslog events, SNMP trap events, and system-generated events that occur based on polling and on reporting thresholds. When conditions or series of events require more attention, for example, key performance indicator values moving outside of their operational thresholds, the system reports that information in the form of alarms. 
And just as you monitor network performance and evaluate faults, designated users can perform similar monitoring of the Prime Infrastructure Platform itself, including the server, database, and API health and statistics. Now that you know the types of monitoring that you can do, where in Prime Infrastructure do you access the information that you need? General network infrastructure performance data are available on the Network Summary dashboards, which present summary and aggregate data on aspects of the overall network. You can get an overview of general network metrics and alarm, event, and syslog summaries. On the overview dashboards, you can see high-level wired and wireless device reachability, resource usage, coverage areas, network device level summaries, and interface level summaries. Any table listing a device IP address provides access to a Device 360 Views pop-up window by using the information icon. The window contains a significant amount of device information, including listing alarms and providing information about neighboring devices. Device icons on network topology maps also provide access to the pop-up window. When information in the Device 360 view prompts you to evaluate a device further, you can navigate directly to detailed device information at the feature level. As you learn in the Device Management Overview video, the feature information that you see is based on the specific device type. Wireless site maps and network topology maps are another method by which you can monitor portions of the network for which you are responsible. They provide visual depictions of the portions of the network that they represent. For detailed information on using maps, refer to the Mapping the Network module in the Introducing Cisco Prime Infrastructure 2.2 e-learning course. In addition to wireless sitemaps, Prime Infrastructure provides some other key tools for monitoring wireless portions of the network. The security dashboard reports overall wireless security metrics, such as rogue access points and wireless intrusion prevention system, or WIPs, events. The mesh dashboard includes metrics specific to mesh networks and their associated mesh devices. It reports such information as alarms, the worst hop count, links with the worst signal-to-noise or SNR values, and packet error rates. The Clean Air Dashboard reports such information as air quality and the worst radio frequency interferers. And the Context Aware Dashboard reports such information as element count history, the current count of devices that the system is tracking, rogue devices that the system is tracking, and Individual Mobility Services Engine or MSE statistics. You can perform more specific wireless technology monitoring by using tools available on the Monitor menu. Radio Resource Management, or RRM, provides continuous monitoring of all neighboring wireless lightweight access points, or APs, and reports their performance statistics, including power details, configuration mismatches, and channel changes. RRM can detect issues in the RF environment, such as co-channel interference and signal coverage problems. By automatically adjusting the power levels and channel configurations of access points, RRM helps mitigate performance issues, reduces the need to perform intensive site surveys, increases system capacity, and provides automated functionality that compensates for areas unable to access RF, referred to as RF dead zones, and for access point failures. Prime Infrastructure supports monitoring the actions that RRM has taken over a period of time. By using clean air technology, the system reports on the non-802.11 devices, such as microwave ovens or Bluetooth devices, that are causing radio frequency interference, which you can monitor on the Interferers page. 
Clean Air technology requires that the access points that you deploy support clean air. To locate interferers on site maps, the system must include at least one Mobility Services Engine, or MSE. The MSE platform supports Mobility Services applications and collects and aggregates key wireless network information, including RF interference sources. We describe MSE functionality in more detail in the data collection processes topic in this video. For more information on clean air technology, you can refer to Cisco documentation that addresses clean air deployment and operations. On the Unjoined Access Points page, you can identify access points in the network that have not joined with a wireless controller. Access points must join with wireless controllers in order for prime infrastructure to discover and manage them. In this process, the system also applies the appropriate configuration settings to allow client access to the access point. To determine the reasons why an access point is not joined to a wireless controller, you can have the system perform analysis on the issue by using the troubleshooting feature. The system analyzes the access point, returns the analysis results, and lists the corrective actions that you can take. The results include error messages and controller log information. You also can run real-time troubleshooting, or RTTS, to see the debugging messages reported by all of the wireless controllers that the access point has attempted to join, which might help identify a cause for the failure. Monitoring access point, or AP radios, provides important information on the state of APs on the network, their usage statistics, and their operational states. On the Access Point Radios page, you can review the details about the AP radio device, radio protocol, and information on the controller that is managing the AP radio. To review feature level details and access monitoring tools, click the link in the AP name field. You can expand categories in the features list to review related statistics. Key data includes AP address details, AP uptime, the software version on the AP, and inventory information. You can ping the access point radio to determine reachability and response, navigate to lists of the alarms or events occurring on the device, or start a packet capture session on the access point. For detailed information on the devices in the data center, you can navigate to Compute Devices, accessible on the Monitor and Inventory menus. The Compute Resources list provides access to all of the resources and devices that provide or support compute capability. You can monitor virtual elements on which the hypervisor, such as a VMware ESXi, is reporting on the data centers, clusters, hosts, and virtual machines pages. System users must manually start data center, cluster, and host monitoring to initiate data reporting. In support of virtual machine inventory and data collection, a system user must add the VM hypervisor as a discovery source. The data that the VM hypervisor, such as the ESXi vCenter, collects is summarized on the data center dashboard. The dashboard reports metrics on hosts, such as host usage by CPUs, and on virtual machines, such as VM statuses and the number of VMs by operating system and resources, compute resources, and host CPU and resource usage. You can click a compute resource data element to navigate to its related details in compute devices. When monitoring virtual elements, you most commonly evaluate CPU and memory usage on the various components. On the clusters page, you can see the hosts that are running the virtual machines in each cluster and review the virtual machine's monitoring statuses. When you click a link, the system navigates to the virtual machines page, which lists each virtual machine. And by clicking a name link, you can review summary information on a machine's CPU, memory usage, and other details. On the Hosts page, you can see a list of all of the virtual machines running on each host.
and by clicking a link, you can monitor CPU and memory usage trends over time. On the Virtual Machines page, you can see a list of all of the individual virtual machines and navigate to pages to review virtual machine details as you saw previously. Prime Infrastructure reports application-specific data on various dashboards. In the Overview category on the Service Assurance dashboard, you can monitor the aggregated application traffic statistics. In the Performance category on the Application dashboard, you can monitor clients, servers, application bandwidth consumption and response times, and application server performance. On the Voice and Video dashboard, you can monitor video application and telephony information, such as real-time protocol or RTP streams transporting the most traffic and experiencing the most jitter and packet loss, and those sites reporting the worst voice experience based on the mean opinion score or MOS. On the Services menu, under the Application Visibility and Control heading, you can access the Performance Routing Monitoring page. Performance Routing Monitoring reports on the automated application traffic management activities that the IWAN Performance Routing function is performing. Performance Routing manages traffic by dynamically selecting the optimal path for critical business applications based on reachability, delay, jitter, and packet loss, while evenly distributing traffic to maintain equivalent link usage levels. Microsoft Link Traffic Monitoring is available on the Services menu under the Application Visibility and Control heading. You can monitor specific link conversations and their audio and video details and the link call experience for specific users or among sites. Prime Infrastructure reports client and user specific data on various dashboards. In the Overview category on the Client Dashboard, you can monitor summary information about the wired and wireless clients connected to the network, including the distribution of associated clients based on the protocols that they use to connect, their extensible authentication protocol or EAP types and their authentication types, which helps you determine the number of wired and wireless devices and their connection methods the speed distribution of wired clients, which provides insight into the type of wired clients that you have and their bandwidth requirements. This information also can help administrators size the network appropriately. A summary list of the active client-related alarms, including wired client alarms related to the 802.1x group of networking protocols and a subset of wireless alarms. Alarms are current as of the last time that the system refreshed the data. Client traffic and client posture status, which reports the client endpoints that are in or out of compliance with the rules configured on the Identity Services Engine that authorizes client access to the network. And the most used wireless LAN service set identifiers or SSIDs by clients and the switches with the greatest number of clients connected. You can monitor clients and their associated users in detail on the Clients and Users page. Based on the specific monitoring that you need to do, you can filter the page to display specific types of clients, such as clients actively using the network or clients with sessions that are reporting problems. By clicking the MAC address link, you can review details about the client and the active session based on the network configuration. On the Overview tab, you can review general client and session information. Note that the system is populating the information that you see here from the database. To ensure that you're seeing current information, you can manually refresh the data. When the configuration includes at least one Identity Services Engine, or ISE, the details include the type of endpoint connecting the device and security information, such as the authorization profile.
You can scroll the page to see statistics over time for such data as the client's received signal strength indicator, or RSSI, history, and signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR history, data exchange rates, and the applications that the client accesses most often. The RSSI and SNR charts provide color coding on their y-axis to indicate statistics that are falling in normal ranges or are crossing into thresholds that are outside of those ranges. Information available on other tabs can include the client's current location and location history, when the configuration includes at least one mobility services engine, the client's identification, onboarding, posture, and policy when the configuration includes at least one identity services engine, troubleshooting analysis tools, RF interference and air status when the configuration includes specific types of wireless access points, and any events that the client is reporting. A key feature on the client's and users page is the access to the user 360 view pop-up window. To open the window, click the Information button beside a user's name. In the User 360 view, you can see where and how the user is connected, any alarms associated with the session, and the application or applications in use. When users are using more than one device, an icon representing each device appears in the window. To review details about devices, you can click the device icon of interest which updates the window with the associated details. When you're evaluating an actively occurring issue on a device, you can perform analysis by using troubleshooting. The system performs analysis by replaying the client association. It begins with the wired or wireless association and then evaluates the 802.1x protocol authentication so that it can identify and report on the point at which the problem occurred. It then opens the Troubleshoot and Debug tab with the analysis results. When it detects problems, the analysis makes recommendations on how you might correct them. You can review statistics, session details, and recommendations for correcting issues, and access debugging messages and more. The More drop-down list provides access to additional actions that you can take, or reports that you can run based on the type of client that you've selected in the list. For example, to see a client's current location on a high-resolution map, you can select the client and then select Present Map. When you want to perform ongoing monitoring of a particular client or clients, you can use the Track Clients feature. That way, the system generates a notification when it detects that the client is using the network. You can configure the system to generate alarms or generate and send email notifications to you or users that you designate. This type of monitoring can be helpful when, for example, intrusion detection software identifies that an attack on the network has occurred from a host that is no longer connected. By tracking the client, the system will notify you when that host connects again. Another feature that can help make user monitoring easier is to associate usernames to MAC addresses by using the Identify Unknown Users function. When usernames are available, it can be easier to recognize users on the network or when the same user is experiencing various access issues. When the network includes one or more Cisco Identity Services Engines, or ISEs, for client and endpoint authentication, Prime Infrastructure can collect additional information about clients. You learn more about this method of data collection in the Data Collection Processes topic in this video. Faults and events report changing conditions on the network and its devices and can indicate when conditions require additional or more immediate attention. Because fault reporting is a key monitoring feature and can escalate critical changes, Prime Infrastructure reports that information in many areas of the application. To call more immediate attention to alarms that are occurring, the system provides an alarm indicator on the application banner, which displays the number of alarms with the highest severity that are currently active. You can click the indicator to open the alarm summary, which lists all of the active alarms, such as critical, major, or minor, in each alarm category. 
For efficient navigation to the item or items of interest, the summary provides links to categorized alarms or to specific alarm severities occurring in a category. When you click a category link, the page displays all of the alarms that are currently active for the category and the summary remains open. When you click a number link in a category row below an alarm status, the page displays the alarms indicating that status for that category. To review a complete list of alarms, click the View Details button. In this case, the system closes the alarm summary and navigates to the Alarms page. In the Overview category on the Incidents dashboard, you can review summaries of all of the alarm and syslog activity that the network is reporting for all network devices. You also can see the types of alarms that are being reported most frequently and review device reachability, which you can filter to find devices reporting reduced reachability statuses. In the Network Summary category, another incidence dashboard reports alarms by category and severity in the Metrics section. It also provides summaries of all of the wireless security alarms, events, and syslogs that the network is reporting. You can click an alarm indicator in a chart to open a page that lists the specific wireless security alarms, events, or syslogs that the network is reporting in that category. You can monitor wireless specific alarms on the security dashboard in the wireless category. Summaries report alarms associated with rogue or unauthorized access points. Network attacks detected by a Cisco Adaptive Wireless Intrusion Prevention System or Adaptive WIPs, and Clean Air Security, which indicates devices that pose potential security risks in the shared wireless spectrum. Topology maps present alarms that are occurring on the portion of the network that the map represents and associates them to the devices or links that are generating the alarms. When reviewing alarms on a location group level, the group icon displays the most critical alarm level occurring at the location, which helps you to recognize potential problem areas on the network. Alarm severity is illustrated by using color-coded indicators. When evaluating various alarms that are occurring, you can click a link in the alarm summary list to open a list of associated alarms, or open a more detailed map. When investigating specific alarms, you can click an icon on the map to begin seeing more detailed information about the device or link reporting the problem. Wireless sitemaps also present alarms that access point radios are reporting in broad and more specific views. The map's tree view list indicates the most critical alarm status that a site is experiencing. In the list, you can expand a branch entry to see the specific building or floor where the access point radio alarm is occurring. Then you can open building or floor views to identify areas or devices that are generating alarms. You also can open access point details to retrieve alarm information. On the monitor menu, you can navigate to the complete lists of alarms, events, and syslogs that the system is reporting for all device groups. These lists provide an alternate method to monitoring the network for potential issues, providing flexibility to monitor devices by types or locations, or by categories that system users have organized, or by alarm severities. Various application areas, including dashboards and maps, provide navigation to the alarms and events pages. When you use that navigation, the system filters the list based on the type of alarm that you clicked to access the page. When you begin working to resolve conditions causing an alarm, you can navigate here to acknowledge the alarm or assign it to yourself or someone else. You also can define device groups to best support your monitoring tasks. For example, you might define a group that includes all of the devices that you consider critical for monitoring. You can define custom user groups on the Network Devices page. Then, on the Alarms and Events page, you can select the group to filter the lists to display alarms, events, and syslogs for the devices in that group only. When you're monitoring syslogs, note that by default, the list displays only those syslogs reporting severity levels of 0 through 2, 
In the Show drop-down list, you can indicate that the list include all of the sys logs that the system is reporting or filter them based on time period or other factors. Prime Infrastructure generates alarms based on a predefined list of events and sys logs. You can add custom syslog or custom trap events by using custom syslog events when you need the system to report alarms on those events. You can monitor the health of the Prime Infrastructure Platform to help ensure optimal system performance and avoid system downtime that might impact network operations. In the Network Summary category, the Incidents Dashboard reports system health alarms by severity in the Metrics section. You can access more detailed monitoring information on the Admin Dashboard in Administration. On the Health tab, administrators can monitor system health statistics over time and alarms that the system is generating. For those developers who are working with APIs, the Admin Dashboard also provides summaries of API health and trend statistics for monitoring purposes. On the Appliance page in Administration, administrators also can review information and statistics on the Prime Infrastructure Server and its interfaces. Now that you have reviewed the types of monitoring features that Prime Infrastructure provides, let's look at how the system collects network information. On initial installation, Prime Infrastructure does not populate network data until it connects to and adds network devices to its inventory. The system uses the Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, to connect to and communicate with network devices. After device discovery, Prime Infrastructure uses SNMP and Telnet SSH to collect inventory data, including hardware and software components, and information on the features and technologies that are active on the device. Configuration files, including the running and startup configurations, and the VLAN database configuration if applicable. Performance metrics, and events such as traps and syslogs. When collecting monitoring data, the system applies monitoring policies available on the Monitor menu. Monitoring policies define the parameters and operational thresholds that the system will use to determine data reporting. Auto monitoring policies are provided with the system and begin monitoring automatically, which means that Prime Infrastructure does not require configuration to start collecting data. Auto monitoring policies report the device health metrics of the routers, switches, and hubs, and the interface health metrics of link and trunk ports and WAN interface groups. Based on the polling time intervals defined in the policies, the system begins reporting the data that it's collecting. The data that the auto monitoring policies collect is available in various areas of the application, including on dashboards, in alarms and events, and in reports. After discovery, the system then pulls the devices in the inventory based on various settings for ongoing data collection and reporting. Device polling also continues to reference the automated monitoring policies that become active after the device discovery process. In addition, users can add monitoring policies to define the parameters and thresholds that the system applies when reporting the associated data, such as application response time or voice and video data. The parameters and thresholds that you define to gather metrics and identify changing conditions are completely flexible. Prime Infrastructure also collects and reports application data from the devices that it manages. This way, you can monitor and manage various types of network traffic and performance data. NetFlow is the network protocol that the system uses to collect and deliver IP traffic characteristics from devices, which indicate how and where traffic is traversing the network. To support NetFlow reporting, devices are configured as NetFlow exporters so that they can send data to Prime Infrastructure. The system then captures the information in its embedded NetFlow collector. 
When the configuration integrates network analysis modules, or NAMs, prime infrastructure can collect and correlate network and application metrics calculated by the NAMs. To collect data, the system sends a REST request by using XML to each NAMs REST API. This approach supports detailed analysis of traffic movement and bandwidth usage and more efficient monitoring of changing network conditions. To more easily recognize applications on which the system is reporting, Prime Infrastructure relies on the Network-Based Application Recognition, or NBAR, technology that is embedded in routers, controllers, and NAMs. The NBAR engines on the devices execute Deep Packet Inspections, or DPIs, to recognize applications and to send the system application identifiers and application statistics from the devices. To make application traffic locations easier to recognize during monitoring and troubleshooting, you can use the Endpoint Association function available on the Services menu. By associating endpoints, you can relate all of the end users on a particular subnet to a location group, such as a geographical region or building site. Prime Infrastructure reports detailed wireless network data through its integration with wireless LAN controllers and with Cisco Mobility Services engines. Prime Infrastructure collects wireless LAN controller data, including data on the controller itself and on the access points associated with the controller. Prime Infrastructure primarily uses system jobs and background tasks, accessible in the administration area, to collect the data from wireless LAN controllers. The system reports wireless LAN controller data on various dashboards, in alarms and events, and on device pages. Wireless LAN controllers also forward the data that they collect from access points to Cisco Mobility Services Engines, or MSEs. The MSEs then provide various services that present contextual information about the mobility devices and clients that are using them. This information provides valuable insight into the movement and behavior patterns of those who are using mobile devices. You can find the data that MSEs report on the Context-Aware dashboard. Administrators also can configure support for the Network Mobility Services Protocol, or NMSP, on switches that Prime Infrastructure manages, which allows the system to report context-aware data on wired clients. Context-aware data also helps you track client locations in support of troubleshooting and monitoring rogue APs and clients that the context-aware service of the MSE is detecting. And administrators can configure the system to collect client data when it receives a trap or syslog that indicates a client's association to or disassociation from an access point or a switch port. Using the device profiling process, which either a controller or a Cisco Identity Services Engine or ISE can perform, the system determines the type of device that's connecting to the network and determines whether the device has current security settings and applications that meet network access criteria. With this information, you can determine an end user's network session status. Identify possible problems with the end user's authentication or authorization for network access. And troubleshoot user applications and site bandwidth utilization. When the network does include an ISE for client and endpoint authentication, the engine associates the user to an authorization profile, which allows the user access to specified resources. In these cases, Prime Infrastructure also displays the authorization profile name that it associated with the user. As we describe in the Device Discovery and Device Polling subtopics, monitoring policies define the parameters and operational thresholds that the system will use to report data, including faults. When conditions fall outside of policy parameters or thresholds, the system can generate and report these conditions as alarms and events. In administration, you can configure the system settings that control the management and reporting behaviors of alarms. You also can configure the behaviors of the events and syslogs that form the basis for generating alarms, which provide detailed information. 
Configuring these global settings is important for ensuring that the system is escalating issues and managing fault reporting based on operational and business requirements. Let's look at some key settings for managing alarms and events. You can configure notification receivers so that northbound systems can receive data from prime infrastructure, including receiving alarms or receiving events that are related to guest access activity, such as guest user accounts that are added, authenticated, or expired. Forwarding these alarms or events helps ensure that you're gathering the data that you need in the systems that you rely on for operational reporting and management activities. In addition to configuring the forwarding details, you can configure one or more categories of events that you want to forward to the receiving system that you're configuring. You also can configure the specific severity level or levels of the events that the system is forwarding. On the Alarm Severity and Auto Clear page, you can define the severity levels that the system applies to the alarms that it reports and the time period that passes before the system automatically clears alarms. To configure an alarm severity level, you can expand the category and find the specific alarm. The system applies a default severity level to all of the alarms. To change the severity level, double-click the alarm row which makes the severity and auto clear duration fields available for editing. Then select the severity level that you want to apply. Note that when administrators change severity levels, you can return the alarm to its system default severity level. You also can define the time period in hourly increments that passes before the system automatically applies a cleared status to an alarm, which overrides the global system default settings. With the settings defined, you can save your changes. The settings that you define will apply to new alarms that the system generates and does not affect current or cleared alarms. It's important to recognize the various methods that the system uses to collect and report data, particularly if you're not seeing the information that you expect in the system. This way, you can better understand what you need to evaluate or change to correct collection or reporting issues. Prime Infrastructure provides you with numerous tools to analyze network data from various perspectives depending on what the system is reporting or the network behavior that you are evaluating. In this video, we're addressing just a few of the key tools available to you to help you evaluate network data and behavior. You can monitor the delivery and quality of voice and video applications traversing the network on the voice and video dashboard. The dashboard reports such aggregated data as jitter, packet loss, and latency among sites. On the Services menu under Application Visibility and Control, you can access the Media Trace page, which reports metrics on all of the active real-time transit protocol or RTP streams. On the Service Health page, accessible on the Services menu, you can monitor the health and performance of business critical applications across all of the locations on the network. For Service Health metrics, Prime Infrastructure defines default baseline rules and alert thresholds for business critical applications. When application behaviors cross baseline thresholds, which are based on the standard deviation for each metric, the system generates alarms. You can see the list of business critical applications that system users have configured by clicking the Configure Business Critical Applications link. This action opens the Applications and Services page. The categories of application types appear in the Services list. Users must add and configure the applications that they want the system to identify as business critical. To support system reporting of application behavior, system users can define the service health rules, which are accessible by clicking the Launch Health Rules link on the Service Health page. Prime Infrastructure defines the key performance metric baselines, each with two severity level thresholds, critical and warning, which are based on the standard deviation of each metric from its baseline. It then calculates the baseline values against the threshold values to help determine abnormal deviations in the metrics. 
When a health metric exceeds either a warning or critical threshold, it displays a color-coded severity level indicator on the service health pages. Let's take a closer look. The health summary view lists each business critical application by site and displays color-coded icons to identify the highest threshold severity levels that the applications are experiencing based on the health rules. You also can control the timeline on which the health data is reporting. When you want to see more detail on a specific item appearing in the health summary, you can point to an indicator. This action opens a pop-up window that presents detailed application performance statistics in charts. The chart lines are interactive also. You can point to a chart line to see another level of detailed performance data. This information can be helpful when you need to see application performance at a very granular level when evaluating performance issues. You also can toggle to the Health Timeline view to see the service health data during timelines that you can define. When you need an overview of general business critical application performance, you can review the summary data on the Service Assurance dashboard. If you identify unusual network activity or behavior, such as a series of similar authentication violations taking place at several branches on the network, you can use the Packet Capture tool to inspect the traffic in detail. Available on the Monitor menu, the Packet Capture tool captures and analyzes data packets flowing to, through, and from Cisco Network Analysis Modules, or NAMs, and Aggregation Services Routers, or ASRs. To begin, you click the Capture Session link to open the Capture Session page. You can start an existing capture session or configure a new one to define the packet parameters specific to the traffic that you're capturing and to identify the devices, interfaces, or NAM data sources that you want to use for capture. When you start a capture session, the system runs a separate session on each device that you specify. You can run multiple capture sessions on multiple devices, and you can start the sessions independently or simultaneously. When you start a capture session, it remains running until the buffer is full or you stop the session manually. You can decode and evaluate a completed capture session on the Packet Capture page, which organizes the capture sessions by device. Find and expand the device entry. Select the Capture Session and then click the Decode button. The system displays the decoded packet data below the list and provides a histogram of the traffic rate. You can zoom the histogram to decode only that portion of the Capture Session. For example, if you want to evaluate a burst on the histogram. You also can copy packet capture files to the system for evaluation. For example, when you perform a packet capture on a NAM, the NAM retains the PCAP file. You can find the NAM file in the list and copy it to Prime Infrastructure for decoding and evaluation. You can merge two capture files for decoding by selecting the sessions of interest and using the merge function. This comparison can be helpful when you're evaluating asymmetric traffic. In support of other decoding and evaluation tools, you can export capture files in the PCAP format. This way, you can use the tool that you prefer to decode the capture session data. To analyze RF activity, Prime Infrastructure integrates the Spectrum Expert application, which monitors the RF spectrums used by a variety of wireless technologies, such as Wi-Fi 802.11 WLANs. While many monitoring technologies focus on protocol-oriented network data, Spectrum Expert monitors and reports on underlying physical layer RF activity, which numerous devices can share without being protocol-oriented. It also monitors and reports on the unlicensed bands that wireless networks share with other devices, such as cordless phones or Bluetooth devices. You can access and open the Spectrum Expert application on the Services menu in Prime Infrastructure. For detailed information on using Spectrum Expert, refer to the current Spectrum Expert User Guide. Training Summary You completed the training. 
In this training, you learn to recognize the key performance and fault monitoring capabilities and monitoring tools available in Prime Infrastructure. The processes that Prime Infrastructure uses to collect and report network and application metrics. And the key tools that you can use to analyze network data. This concludes the Monitoring Features Overview video. Thank you for your interest and attention.